Welcome. Joe here with Van on the Run. So I hope you guys are all good. This is uh, my second video. So season one, episode two. And uh, today I am going to give you a quick update on uh, my van build. In addition, I've had a bunch of people ask me uh, to see the van because they really haven't seen much of it. So I'm going to show you a little bit more of my starting point. I haven't gotten too far. Uh, I've had to do some structural stuff I'm going to talk about. Right, you got to get your foundation ready before you start building your house. And so overall, I'm going to tell you, this is a, I'll tell you what it is. First, I've got a 2016 Ford Transit. It's a cutaway. It's a 350 HD, which means I have the dually. And the cutaway means that it was shipped off to another company to put a big box on the back of it. So instead of the 75, 65, 55 square foot that most vans have, I have a box van that gives me 120, uh, somewhere between 120, 125 square feet. So uh, that's just my choice for me, and I will probably do a video on that, on those decisions and my research and why I chose to go this way. I got lucky. This van happened to be pretty close to me. Uh, I was less than an hour away. Uh, it had some mileage on it, 132,000 when I bought it. I've now about 3,000 miles into it almost. And I got to knock on wood. I'm happy. No major problems. Driving great. Handles great, like I said before. Uh, it's, not, it's been a good vehicle. Uh, I have since learned that uh, from a lot of people that uh, this, these things, if you take care of them, will go a really long ways. Uh, I've had a couple of people that have had these for over 400,000 miles uh, come back to me and tell me, just take care of it, and uh, I'm going to do that. So I think I'm excited about that. Uh, so, so it's a van. It's big, right? It's got a big box along the side, and uh, you know, it's a transit on the front. Nothing special there. You saw my radio install. This is the back of it. It's got a roll-up door. The important thing you want to look at, I want to show you, is who makes this box. This company is called Unicell. And they're a U.S. company, and they make a one-piece uh, uh, fiberglass box and uh, mounted on this on this chassis. And uh, so, you know, they have a pretty good company. Uh, I've called them a couple of times. I feel like I get getting the same guy. Maybe he was really helpful, uh, really really patient and understanding, and, and we have great conversations. Coming to find out. Uh, Yes, you don't see a lot of these being built. You don't see these on YouTube videos or channels on the builds on these. There is one other I found. Uh, it's something to do with squat racks or something like that, I forget, uh, up in Canada. Um, it's pretty cool. I did look at that very closely because it's the exact same shell and body, but not a lot of others. But come to find out, talking to the company, uh, I think it was David I was talking to this last week, he said that uh, he gets like one phone call a week of people that are, are building these things or are looking at building these into RVs. And I'm like, that's pretty cool, you know? Uh, uh, so I'm not alone. Uh, so I will tell you that uh, I'm pretty happy with the box. I'm looking forward to building it. I think, you know, you'll see in the inside in a minute, I get a nice square surface to work with. I think that's gonna make my life a little easier. There's one downside. They have these little trim pieces on the side here, right? You see the little black trim pieces that matches the front of the, van, of the transit van? Uh, they fade. This one's not faded because I've already painted it. You have to paint them. You got, I just looked, looked ugly for a while there. I just couldn't take it. It literally was turning white in places. It had faded so much. So, uh, but not a big deal. I'm going to tell you what I did. Uh, I basically took it off. I was debating what to do. I was thinking about painting it on. Uh, but that meant a whole lot of masking. <laughs> when I crawled underneath, what I noticed was all these panels have these, these little tabs to them here, right? So you see these little tabs, uh, and what they do is they just hold them on with these little press fittings. Let me see, I got one in my pocket here. Uh, these little fittings, little star fittings, they just press them on, they lock in, they don't screw on or anything like that. And uh, uh, so I found that if you just put a, a screwdriver in between these little veins, these little, little slots there, you can pry those out. Uh, I, there were some couple were rusted, so I needed more. Uh, I also needed another part, but I'll talk about that in a second too. So I was pretty good. I got that off. Uh, and then I was really kind of figuring out how to get the rest of it off. So if you're doing one of these, you're probably wanting the same thing. Well, how do you get all that stuff off? Here's the secret. Start here at the wheel well. Take that off, right? Get your wheel well piece off. It, you know, you can see all the holes where the lugs just go through. You take those, those clips off and that exposes these two rails. And now what you really are, are looking, like I said, these two rails here, what you're concerning about is how do you get this off? Well, this is pretty cool. If you look closely, you'll see it's really just press fitted in here. They just snap it right in. So to get it off, just 
put a screwdriver in there and pull it off. To put it back on, just reverse it. It's pretty simple, right? That's how that goes. Really cool. Now, there is one other spot you have to be uh, concerned about, and it's up here in the front. You have these corner pieces. There are four clips, I think, behind there, and there are two screws. These two screws actually have a square head. Don't try a Phillips. Won't work. And uh, one was rusted. Had to drill it out. So that was fine. I got that out. Uh, there was another piece that uh, back here. I want to show you this one. Uh, there's a piece that fills in here. This had uh, has two screws in it. When you take this panel off, you'll expose those two screws. Uh, actually, that's one of those. It's the left side. I had to order mine was broken, and so I ordered one of those. And then the company Unicell was awesome. They said he'd grab me a handful of clips so that I could put my panels back on, pieces back on, because my local Napa didn't have those clips. I don't know. Couldn't quite. They were small, like three eighths. <coughs> Seven sixteenths doesn't work. And so I got that one end piece coming. I'll screw that on and off I go. And I did uh, change some of the fasteners out to stainless steel. So I'm putting stainless steel fasteners back in because I am in New Hampshire. This thing will rust. Uh, it did rust. In fact, that's one of the projects I'm going to talk to you about next. Uh, I have been busy, but you're not really going to see the work because it's all underneath. You don't want to crawl underneath here and look, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, so it's a New Hampshire vehicle, four years on the road, 130,000 miles, which means it was a little rusted. And uh, here's the thing, though. It was just the unicell box steel that was rusted, which is heavy steel. It's not going to rust through. I mean, it's heavy steel, channels and, and, uh, and whatnot. The body, the chassis, the truck, and all that white framing underneath, still very nice and white and clean and I mean even the bolts aren't even rusting under there. I'm going to give the Transit a big kudos for you know a quality vehicle holding up to the New Hampshire weather and the salt roads here. It really is doing well uh, but the rust like I said was just the the box itself and here's why I fixed it. I, I did I wire brushed it, I treated it with uh, navel jelly, you know you brush that stuff on it's pretty cool nice and simple and then you got to get under there and hose it off well that's a mess yeah, you get pretty soaked doing that, and uh, yeah, I had to wear glasses, splash you, because it splashes back at you. It's, you know, you got a lot of, you know, uh, stuff going on underneath there. So I got it all cleaned off. I sprayed it with a rust converting paint uh, primer. That took care of, uh, made it all look nice. And then my last move was to really just put a, uh, a truck bed liner on it. And here's why I did that. So I figure I might, not sure, I might put spray foam underneath. I got a nice little two, two and a half inch channel there and, and maybe I can get a little bit more foam. I got lots of room actually underneath this thing. Uh, and put some insulation under there for myself. That'll help me out. I'm going to insulate inside, but I could do some outside insulation. And so if I did that, I was concerned about moisture getting between the, the insulation, the spray foam, and the steel. And so, yeah, the paint would help, but the truck, be a truck bed liner would really help, right? So I think that's where I'm hoping my moisture gets trapped. If it does, it's between the bed liner and the paint and the uh, spray foam, and uh, I won't have to worry about that project. So I think that was a good thing to do. Again, if this is going to be any kind of long-term project, you just want to do it right, and I think that was one of the right moves to do. So if you're looking in the background here, you probably saw one of my other things that I did, uh, and I'm going to talk to you about that. I bought a whole bunch of red boxes. Yeah, it's all Milwaukee. Let's see if I can get out of the picture. It's all Milwaukee stuff. So here's what happened. I let me open this all the way, get it out of the way. I told you I was selling everything, and I did. And I sold all my yellow cordless tools before I realized I needed them. And now that I need them, I don't have them. So, yeah, I got to tell you, I got some great friends and neighbors here where I'm living uh, that offered me their tools, their shops. Uh, they're retired or weren't using them. And, and I was like, great, you know, but, you know, I really need some cordless stuff, too. I uh, just don't want to be unplugging stuff, plugging it back in, and tripping over cords. Uh, and I like the small, compact size of cordless tools. So I did my research. That's what I do. And I went out there looking for, you know, what, what is a good uh, uh, choice for me, a good solution. And I actually decided to go to Home Depot yesterday. So I don't know yesterday was a good day or a bad day. I'm <laughs> still going to decide. Uh, but it was very coincidental. Uh, and that's, that's just how things have been going lately for me. 
The uh, I got the Home Depot. I was looking at that Ryobi stuff. I'm gonna start figure out what I got there and see if, if it made sense for me. And this young guy walks up to me. Okay, he's in his 20s and I'm in my 50s. Big deal. Uh, early 50s. And he walks up to me and, and asks me some questions and say, can I help you? And I look over in a shirt and it says Ryobi on it. I said, I bet you can. And so he starts telling me, you know, what I need to know about the tools and filling me in. And then he asked me about my project uh, as he was doing that. And he was learning that, you know, what I'm building and my longer term plans, maybe. And he said, well, have you considered Rigid at, Rigid at all? I said, well, no. He says, well, that's really a step up from the Ryobi. It'll last a little bit longer. He said, but then you obviously have the Milwaukee, which is another big step up. It's really more of the, the commercial grade, professional grade. And I was like, well, okay, well, tell me everything I need to know about all these. And Well, he did, because come to find out, he actually reps all three of those. He stocks all three of those products. That's his company. I'm learning more about these tool companies, I guess. <coughs> so that was awesome. Uh, he filled me in on everything, and after that conversation, I picked Milwaukee. Made sense for me. For me. A uh, lot more money, but it made sense. So that's what I did. I went with the Milwaukee, and then we spent time together figuring out what kits made the most sense. So this is a tail end of uh, really the holiday sale, 4th of July weekend sales they were doing. And so they had a deal. If you bought a battery pack kit, this one was $2.99, with a 8-hour and a 6-hour amp battery and a rapid charger, you got a tool. So I, it's a fuel. So I picked, I picked that. Uh, if you bought the other battery pack, which was smaller, which was a, it had a 2 amp and a 5 amp and a charger, then you got another tool. Whoop, another tool. So I picked that tool. You know, it's hard pointing at stuff when you're not looking where you're pointing uh, and doing it backwards in the camera. And then I needed a palm sander because I couldn't find mine. I'm pretty sure I sold it. And then, of course, you need the basic tools, right? You need a skill saw, drill, and a hammer or a, a impact. So uh, that's what I bought. It was kind of, we had a good conversation. It was fun. You know, he's there for the day, apparently. And uh, he'd been there at 6.30 in the morning. So he asked me, hey, you know, can I prove to my boss that I was actually working? So we went out and we, uh, we took all, of my, all my stuff I just bought with my foot-long receipt. And we, he had his, his truck out there. And, and here it is. I'm hoping I, I got it in here if I'm editing this video. And uh, if not, uh, you might miss out on it. So <laughs> I'll put it in. I'll try. I got to do some video editing. And so I put, uh, we, we stood there in front of that. We had uh, somebody walking by take our picture and to prove to his boss that he was working in front of his red Makita truck. It was pretty cool. It was kind of funny. We had a good time with it. Uh, I didn't have my camera, so I didn't, I didn't videotape any of that. So that was one of the projects I did. Here's one of the other things I've done. As you're seeing the van, you're also seeing some of the projects I've done. Here's one. Yeah, that's a backup camera. And that's what I want to talk to you about next. I'm going to take you inside and show you my backup camera. Sorry, the light's going to change as we come in here. Uh, and then I get underneath my skylight, which lets in a lot more light. Uh, so, yeah, first time seeing the box, right, for a lot of you folks. Uh, but it's just a 17-foot box. It's pretty basic. Uh, I'm going to rip off this paneling and put in a stronger paneling, a whole bunch of other things I'm doing in here. I'll tell you more in a second. Uh, but I wanted to show you my backup camera. I think this is pretty cool. And let's see if I can turn this around without driving you guys crazy. And at the same time, I'm going to kind of turn my mic around and let's see how this works all right so do you see my camera check it out uh, that's my display it look interesting to you so that's a 3d view of my care of my vehicle uh, basically in order to do that I have four cameras what I've got is this little box from a company called owl eye that takes those four cameras that they give you and they stitch them together and they give you this view. Now you can find more YouTube videos on this. Uh, this one's not perfect. I have not done the calibration process. So the image doesn't look perfect. You can see the lines where the cameras come together. I'm hoping that clears up once I do the calibration, which is the next step. It takes a little while to do. I haven't had a chance to do it. So pretty cool box. Uh, I will tell you, Owl Eye as a, as a product, it works good. I'm happy with it. The, I got one weird thing I'm trying to figure out, but I can probably fix that. Um, I might do an in depth review on this product. I will tell you right now, though, the manual sucks. Just plain sucks. Oh my God, I hope they rewrite that thing for somebody soon. If they don't, I'm going to. I think I could sell a manual for 20 bucks just because it's such a pain to read the one they give you that people would pay to have a good manual. 
<laughs> it's unbelievable. So this whole device, and it, it, all in the end, by the way, it cost me like $500. Why did I do it? Why did I go this extra level? Well, there's no no backup, you know, rear view mirror here. And the backup camera, yeah, would have worked. I am pretty good with side view mirrors and backing up. But you know what? If I'm living in this, and i got to be honest, uh, this has a feature that really closed the deal for me. I can push a button and turn this on and I can see what's outside of my vehicle day or night. That was important. Uh, this basically just became a security camera. And I even have a memory stick to record. Up here there's a little memory stick right there on the right side that uh, will record what's going on. And so if I can press that button from inside my, my living quarters with a monitor in my living quarters, I can see what's outside without having to look out. Well, what's the benefit of that? As I bring you back around here, the benefit of that is that I get to, okay, there goes my mic, so you can't hear me now, right? And my mic's making all kinds of noise, probably. As I get to, uh, get to the living in here, uh, I want to know what's on the outside. And one of the best ways to do that, obviously, originally in my design was to just put a, a window or, or two in, one on each side maybe, right? So maybe I put a window in, maybe I put a window on this wall over here and on the other side, which is where my bed area is going to be. And then I could look out. But with the camera, I don't need the windows for security. Now, I got plenty of light. I'm actually going to change this out. This isn't going to be my light source, um, but I'm going to have a skylight and similar concept, bringing pl plenty of light in, plus LEDs. I also decided not to put my door in. I was going to put a door in here. That's gone now. Yeah, hey, so if you're paying attention, Lisa and Chris, who helped me design my first layout, uh, when I started drawing it up on Sketchpad, it didn't quite work. I came up with a better design, so even you guys are going to be surprised now. Yeah, I kept some of the things we came up with. You guys had some good stuff. I kept those, uh, but I've changed the layout, so you'll see that uh, at some point. But the door's gone. The windows are gone. I bought them. I got to sell them. No big deal. They were used. Uh, it was not a lot of money. We'll get, we'll get rid of them. We'll get those out. Moved on to somebody else who can repurpose them. So, uh, oh, by the way, while I'm talking about the camera also in here, uh, here's where the camera mounts. Let me show that to you real quick. So, if you look at that, what I did was I put a, a metal plate up there because I mounted the camera between the framing. And I didn't want to screw just into the fiberglass and have that be what supported the cameras, although they're really tiny. If something hit them, I want something stronger. I wanted those screws going into metal. So I epoxied uh, some metal uh, brackets up there. You could use pretty much anything for epoxy. Let's see, I used, I used a Loctite. I used a Loctite epoxy. And yeah, I can see that on camera. So I just used this Loctite epoxy. Took five minutes to dry up there. Drilled my hole, screwed into it, ran the wire through. There's three holes you got to do: two for the screws, one for the wire, and then and then the pigtail just just plugs into to the regular harness, which all runs up here. Uh, in my case, in this with this cutaway, I ran it all, you know, over here into the corner, underneath this, which lets me put my wiring under there. Which that's just the, the oh boy, that's noisy. That's just the roof. The, you know, the top of the, the, the van box, uh, of, the, of the cab actually, the factory part of it. Uh, I was able to run the wires down behind this panel. They're just a, a little area, I pinched them and I ran them over into the cab, up through the headliner, right where I needed it. It was perfect, it was really easy. So if you are doing a unicell and you wanna put that in, there you go, do that. So that's most of everything I've done. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I hope you guys uh, appreciate where I'm at. I'm hopefully moving on here to my next big project. This is getting dropped off next week, I think, to my fabricator for its first major uh, upgrade. We'll see how that goes. So that's everything. There's a little bit more of the van. You've seen the box. It's just full of stuff right now. I've got to empty it out so I can get going on my build. Now that i got my tools, i got a lot of my supplies, I'm ready to go. Anyways, peace out. Please hit subscribe, join, comment below if you got suggestions on things you think I should do. Uh, besides improving my video you know, work here, I, you know, I'll work on that. <laughs> I think it's part of the process everybody goes through. I'll get better at this too, I promise. So there you go. I'm not cutting into the box, except for the roof. So I like that decision. Talk to you later. Keep an eye out. Come back soon. I hope to see my next video. Cheers.